that's why I love taking pictures in Kirtan mm -hmm. and like Rathi Atra. I love doing that. Catching gotten, a happy look on the yeah, people's faces. Yeah, I've gotten so many like crazy pictures where I'm like, I don't know how I got this. Like one time this girl was like jumping like really crazy and I just like snapped like a few shots oh, and I wow. got this perfect, like she's smiling and she's perfectly clear. I'm like, I don't know how this is that's possible, awesome. how I got this yeah, clear yeah, picture. Awesome. And that I got this really one cool. where this guy was like, like there was tons of people coming in between and I was like just trying to get this nice shot of this guy playing Redunga and then I just got this perfect nice shot of him just like and I was like yeah, yes that's like, this so is cool. perfect <laughs>
don't feel that you're ready or whatever. You're like, you don't have to be like reading every day or yeah. whatever. You don't have to chant your drop a like 64 rounds a day kind of thing. You know, yeah. you can just do it at your own pace. Like it didn't feel any pressure. So. And what do you think about like uh, your experience when you started going to public school? With um, how how was that experience for you going into public school with our background obviously being very different than the other Central Pennsylvanians background that we went to school with? Um, well, elementary school was uh, more different than middle school and high school because the fact that it was just me and Pishma like that was it in the mm -hmm. whole school and she was three grades ahead of me so mm -hmm. it was like I was alone I was. People didn't know what vegetarian was. Like, mm -hmm. only some teachers who might have had you or a buyer or whatever would be like, oh, yeah, I get it. But then, yeah. otherwise, mom would have to explain or whatever. Um, and also, that's why I started going by Deva is because of public school. Oh, okay. Because people would pronounce my name wrong. And I was like, Deva's easy, I guess. And yeah. that's where I started getting called that. Because before then, I was called more Hooty. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. Deva sounds more like Ava, Dave, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. So it's easier for them. I started going by that. That, and um, I guess my first, my <laughs> kindergarten teacher called me that, so mm -hmm. everybody okay. else just kind of caught on. And yeah, um, it wasn't like lonely. I was just so alone. <laughs> and then middle school happened, and I actually have. Um, three, I guess, friends at that point. I'm not sure if uh, my cousin was there at that point, but she was in and out of public school mm -hmm. doing homeschooling. But I had at least one other friend that was in my class that was vegetarian, that was, you know, going to the temple. It was, you know, and we're still friends. And mm -hmm. so, and we still go to the same school and stuff. So we like at least had each other to talk to or whatever if people like didn't get what we were talking about oh it's a cottagey or whatever you mm -hmm. know um so there was that yeah yeah um so did you, you did you have any experiences that were like negative as a result of of like being different or not really were you were you able to kind of coast through without too much if i did i I don't remember, okay. and I probably Buried. just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very deep. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I tend to, um, I don't know, have, I guess, more of a persona of, like, not really caring whenever people, like, are mm -hmm. very negative. I'm just, yeah. like, good at ignoring it. Yeah. So, yeah. As a young person, seeing, like, all of the political, racial tensions and stuff mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. What has your experience been on, like, the philosophy that your parents and your many of your friends and their families have followed? Have you seen a practical difference in the way that people live their lives and treat others? Like... It, versus the kind of the outside world the outside like, world in the way that do you feel like there's a difference in that i feel like there is a difference but i also feel like there is a um it's not like cut and clear like oh if you don't you know follow this thing no, like, no no but what is right the but like the, i feel like the difference say? is um just negativity and if you're negative you're gonna just feed more into that and it just slowly gets worse and if you grow up with negative parents you're gonna have a negative life whether you're spiritual not spiritual whatever mm -hmm. um and so yeah i feel like that's that's where it is that's where the <clears throat> i guess the line mm -hmm. so-called would be yeah um because i've like seen firsthand someone growing up you know not spiritual at all and be like a an amazing person, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and like caring for people and stuff like that. And it's because their parents were, even though they were, you know, maybe atheists, whatever, very open and mm -hmm. um, loving and stuff like that. Versus uh, someone maybe also in the same situation, but parents not so much mm -hmm. doing that, and yeah. maybe. Uh, coddling them too much and you know mm -hmm. telling them the rest of the world is evil kind of thing and looking mm -hmm. at it from this 
off mm-hmm. perspective that doesn't need to be there. Overly sheltered. Kind yeah. Of. Or yeah. maybe too not like too open and mm-hmm. not sheltering your kid at all. Like mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so it can go either way. But I feel like it comes down to being more negative versus positive just about everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I I I want. Do you think that it has anything to do with? For me, I think part of it was the melting pot even more so than America already is like our communities were never like almost no matter what temple you go to there might be a few temples that are a little bit outside of this but most temples you go to is like it's not just like in some parts of town you have a temple where it's mostly white people in another part of town it's mostly Latin American people in another part of town like you have this like collection of like like where we grew up there was lots of different people from different places you know you mm-hmm. had we had people. We knew people that were from Trinidad. We knew people from Ghana. We knew mm-hmm. people from Guyana. We knew people, um, you know, all these different places. India, and, uh, South yeah, Africa. India, South yeah. Africa, all these different places. That sort of. I feel like, for me, looking back on it, I've always wondered if that is part of why different things, new things, differences between people has never seemed to me like a, like it's never been like, oh, you're different. I'm yeah. so accustomed to finding out something different or seeing something different than I'm used to seeing or like like you get you get accustomed to like actually being curious about yeah. life as opposed to it being like a closed off like this is always what I've known. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I grew up in this little part of town and that's it. Like you know mm-hmm. like I, anything outside of that is a little weird to me. Yeah. Um, even the word weird I find Junior yeah, kind of uses a lot like oh that's weird. It's like yeah. Thank Whenever you. I, I use that, that like, word. Like, I'm always like, wow, that's so weird. And people will be like, no, no, it's a good thing. And I'm like, I never said yeah, it was a bad thing. I just bad. said it was yeah. weird. Like, yeah. like that yeah. thing is weird. Like, there's nothing wrong with being it's weird. Because yeah. everybody yeah. else, everybody has their own um, paradigm. And that's just what normal is. Like, nobody is exactly normal the same. Normal is subjective. Yeah. To whoever is observing extremely yeah. subjective yeah. i think too that like spirituality like you said it's not it doesn't really matter necessarily about the spirituality in a sense although i think that people that treat people well are being a little bit spiritual with or without their knowledge yeah, but course. but um you you may not be like going into philosophy with it mm-hmm. but if you're treating people well there's a little bit of spirituality there because right, yeah. you're treating them as an equal as a spirit soul you're that's you're, the most yeah, the, that's the. F- I think that really can be seen as like the first step in the devotional process uh-huh. of any spiritual path that you want to follow is like loving other people and treating them decently. Because yeah. even if you're consciously not aware of it, you're still honoring the living entity within them, which is yeah. mm-hmm. God or whatever you know the whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is important to do that. And like, you know, Shanka talked about on his <laughs> interview that yeah. we had with, you know, at least stop eating meat. And like, I, I'm i really happy because she's saying, you know, the aloneness that you felt in high school. And I totally get that because we went through, mm-hmm. you know, similar feeling of being the odd person out which yeah. in 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 the moment i it didn't really bother me that much kind of like you i would just like yeah. shake it off and be like whatever i saw it that they just don't understand and i'm not going to waste my energy trying to convince them why my perspective on eating meat is right yeah i, mean, I just understand that they don't understand the and yeah. i i think if i can just show them that i'm a nice person and i'm friendly yeah, yeah. Then yeah. they'll like me or not like me, but whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then as they begin to build a friendship with you, then you can, you can get into more philosophical like, discussion this is why of why it. you yeah. don't. And they, they're yeah. a lot more open. Yeah. If you just Rather than people, coming out the yeah. gate and then you just turn people off and it's like, yeah. 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 then you really are the odd one out. And mm-hmm. then you end up getting even more like, yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. yeah and I've known that I've never been like a very, like, I don't know that much personally, like, even though I've, you know, experienced my whole life of being you know in the movement like Mm -hmm. I don't know that much and so when people ask me questions I'm like I'm gonna try my best to answer this but honestly there's better people to ask (laughs) like I'm not the person to be asking this particular question a lot of the time I will answer questions like that because I I don't know that much even though I might know a lot more than somebody else I don't know that much I think a good way 
of seeing that. Like now when I have people <clears throat> ask me questions, mm -hmm. when I was younger, I also would kind of think like, I had a good understanding of the philosophy, but I didn't really feel like getting into it with them mm -hmm. yeah. because I would see how like my mom's family could be like, yeah. They they're not so much like that anymore. They used to be very like fire and brimstone kind of mm. thing. So I'm yeah. like, not worth my energy explaining. But then, well, you want as you get older, like, now a question, yeah. if it's a question that I don't know how to explain, then I start to think. I mean, I should be able to answer that in a way that a, a regular person, right? You know, layman, I can sit there and explain it. And if I don't, then. Now that I'm older, it makes me curious to actually go find out, mm. which I used to not be like that. And, you know, I think when everyone's different when you're younger, yeah. it, uh, but having those experiences early in life and in high school, like you have, I think is important because later on it will, yeah, yeah, make you want to kind of search for well, the answers, or, you know, yeah. Right. I think, so, in regards to that, what is bhakti yoga, like, what is, you know, what you grew up with, what does it mean to you? Um, hmm, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's just, like, my life, <laughs> like, it's just, like, uh, like, comfort, I guess? more mm -hmm. like less of at the moment it at least is it's it, um you know like things like chanting and mm. um and just like thinking about anything that has to do with anything it's more of a of a comfort thing in a <clears throat> and a just uh wanting to do better but knowing that I'm not really at a place that I uh can really move greatly forward and just mm. like um letting it soak in as much as possible without feeling forced to do anything particular but also knowing that it's there that I can lean back on it and that it's like the one thing that'll always be there and that I can always you know like chant if I need to or mm -hmm whatever like i think i had a dream last night where i was in a, like a really bad car wreck and like i literally the whole time was just like and i just <laughs> flew across the thing and just like landed on my feet and i was like <sighs> and just like walked away like that kind of thing where i'm just yeah. like this is like my everything but it's also it doesn't need to be like forefront right now it's just kind of like a mm -hmm. not a crutch but something i can lay back on put my head on their shoulder kind of thing you know mm. where it's like a, a comfort thing i don't know how else to say that yeah if that makes any sense that's good i mean that you know i think that it's interesting like being a generation that grew up in america in the material world in a time where Prabhupada's no longer here. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we grow up, we absorb all of this information without necessarily realizing that we're doing yeah. so. And then, like many of the senior, you know, devotees or, uh, you know, even Prabhupada himself would always say that the children are very special. Mm -hmm. And... So there, I think maybe there's a tendency for like the older generation to kind of put this pressure on the younger generation. Don't waste your time. Don't go out and experience the material world. Mm -hmm. And they mean well. Yeah. But yet <clears throat> there also should be the understanding that they are special. But one of the things that makes them so special is that they have the Krishna Conscious Foundation. So yeah. if they do need to go out and experience the world... Mm -hmm. You know, just like kind of like the Amish people do, it's actually, I think it's a very smart thing that they do is they allow the youth to go out, experience yeah. whatever, and then make a decision. Do you want to come back? 
yeah. to be a part of this community or do you want to go be a part of the outside world? Yeah. Yeah. And I think we we need to kind of Which, adopt that attitude, but not yeah, to the extreme that, like, that they do extreme. where if you go out, no, you yeah. you can't come back. It should be, but in that similar way that we go out, we experience well, the world. and should that and you have to you, learn for yourself at a certain point. You give yeah. your kids, just like with parenting, you're giving your kids tools. You're yeah. teaching them the best you can so that when they're presented with outside challenges, when they're presented with things and you're not when, around. Yeah, when Maya starts not knocking there, you around, you what can, can they make do? the decision. What she's saying when she's scared, she goes to, you know, like yeah. she has these things that she can go back on. And then when and if she wants to, she can decide, I want to start reading more or I want to do this. or I want yeah. to do that. But see, And that's what makes the devotee child the mm. so special is that at such a young age they already have that foundation mm -hmm. whereas a lot of people maybe they don't start beginning their search until they're 40 50 60 years yeah. old yeah. sometimes yeah so you've lived a whole life and it's now, always there like she said it's, it's always, always there, there. even yeah. if she's not actively doing anything yeah. crazy yeah. with it she's still actively kind of like it's in the back of her mind and also no, it's yeah, simple, and that's really all that's yeah. good, that's Very great because it will things like give you direction like, yeah like music uh -huh. or like a song will be inherently like very um what's the word i'm looking for all i can think of is onion <laughs> 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 what is it called like a not maya but um i guess materialistic mm -hmm. uh yeah, I mean, a very materialistic, very superficial song. Yeah, and all I can think of while listening to it is Kirtan. I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. yeah, this song, uh huh, like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is Kirtan, man, uh huh. I'm like, hi, Krishna. <laughs> like That's the whole funny. time, I'm like, it's so oh. like random. There's just like random songs like that where I'm like, this is Kirtan. And it's like not at all. Not like, at all. But you know what? I totally like, know what you this mean. This is Krishna right here. Yeah. <laughs> that song "No Air" with Jordan Sparks. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You used to love listening to that. Song. I did, you but that? you know why I love that? Love that song because I wouldn't listen to it for the. To me, it sounded like a song singing. Like About the mood Krishna. was between Radha and Krishna. Yeah. Right? yeah. And that's how I took it, and I was right. like. It wasn't yeah. a nasty song. There wasn't really anything. No, it was just about a very heavy romantic. It was a, it was romantic a heavy feeling. romantic yeah, yeah. mood of separation. Right, and it's yeah. funny because it, in a, in a way, really, Prabhupada says ultimately we're all trying to satisfy that uh -huh. that male female thing, yeah. which the, the desire for that is within us because it's within Krishna also, and so we go about our life trying to find that whether it's that, your yeah, soulmate yeah, yeah. or that, your you know. yeah and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and to clarify, the the male and female, it doesn't only mean that it has to do with people that are straight. It just that means, <laughs> no, just it means that that, 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 that loving that, that loving relationship, yeah. that energy of you know a one of like being attracted to another being, and the way your two different personalities like mix and match. Well, and I mean and, the interesting thing in the Bhagavad Gita describes yeah. like the the nature of. Krishna, God, yeah. he is the ultimate supreme being. He's the male yeah. energy. Yeah. And all other energy is the female energy. Right, right. Yeah. He's the only so male energy are, in the universe, actually. All, yeah, he's yeah. the only the only male the energy. Creation. And all, because he because everything is attracted to him, so okay. the yeah, just like the magnets on yeah. the, uh, so we ultimately really are that's the, the only actual that's male the only relationship, relationship we have with actress, him is really that there. mood of male female attraction yeah. is between us and god yeah it's pretty powerful yeah yeah um and you can see it literally everywhere you can yeah i mean it's in nature all you you know at one of my favorite chapters in the bhagavad gita is where krishna talks about the different forms that you can recognize him in mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then some like the taste of water when you're really thirsty, you take that, yeah. and it's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just saw Krishna right there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. In, in a form of his energy. Right. Um, it gives you a nice appreciation for everything around you, even if you're yeah. not, like, actively practicing and being, you know, just yeah. to have a, a greater appreciation for everything around you is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it like for you as a child growing up with um, someone like Bhakti Tirta Swami? Do you have many memories of him at all, or what is I that? I have zero memories of I don't him. Remember him. Really? Uh, 
because he passed on my birthday, my first birthday. Oh, yeah. So I was like not really tiny. Yeah, yeah. old yeah. enough to remember anything. Mm -hmm. Um I do remember his mood though. Okay. Because and I still can feel it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't really know how like how to describe that, but uh but being very young and like that same like m memory of being in the temple and be it being like morning and being exhausted kind of thing i could yeah. just going like on the property it like like comes over you like i don't know i like it just there's like a wave and you're like <laughs> you're like okay i'm here yeah. you're just like how's it going and, you know it's um, just like he's giving everyone there a big, big hug all the time yeah, yeah. and yeah. like i just remember that when i was very young and not that it went away completely but it slowly started i guess is the word dissipating yes yeah. Yeah. yeah fading away um as i got older because obviously he had passed but mm -hmm. some people still like carry the mood around with them mm -hmm. which is really nice so yeah i have no actual memories mm -hmm. of him but i do remember the mood and um what is the is there who are some people in your life you know maybe like a couple a few people that you feel like are super like important that maybe you look up to a lot have taught you a lot um anyone that you can really look up to in a very like healthy way in a sense of like them really being guiding even if they're not like actively hands-on guiding but just that type of um relationship like a mentor type thing even if they're not necessarily giving you advice verbally but um <clears throat> this is an interesting question role because model? huh role model yeah yeah Something along those lines. Mentor, uh, role model, i one. don't know where i got this philosophy from <laughs> i don't know who taught it to me or if it was just a thing that i've always done but uh, anytime I'd ever been asked this question, just like on a day-to-day -day basis, anybody asking me this question at school, whatever, I couldn't give you an answer. And I think the reason why, like I didn't know why before, but I think the reason why I don't have an answer is because it's literally everyone. Mm. <laughs> because I go around and what I do all the time, even if it's not, on purpose mm -hmm. is watch what people do and see what other people's reaction are and, and what that is and how to maybe avoid or get that same reaction That's so good. things like i don't know just so small things I like <laughs> i like i like to make people laugh so i'll like mm. A lot of the time, be like that made that person laugh. <laughs> like, let me keep that, and so I can make it laugh again. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, just stuff like that, and then like negative things. I'm like, I know this person doesn't like it whenever yeah. I do this, so I'm just not gonna do that. <laughs> like, or there's I'm no reason. Do that when I really want to make them upset. No, I. <laughs> yeah. I know you and I especially that. like um, <laughs> growing up, like. In a household, a ha ha ha. Asshole. <laughs> in a household, I can't me say it. about speaking yeah. right. I can't mind. do it. <laughs> um, um, in a how household, in a household, mm -hmm. um, with dad and mom, mm -hmm. not necessarily um, uh, anything bad, but just having dad's energy of like ah, and knowing <laughs> that like if he's ever upset or if. If he's ever upset, I know exactly what to do to diffuse. to diffuse it mm -hmm. and solve the situation. And maybe if mm -hmm. he did something that I didn't agree with, know when to bring it up to mm -hmm. not make him more upset, you know, right, to be right. like, hey, I didn't really like how you handled this. And like, yeah. I know when to say that and then be like, can you maybe do it differently yeah. versus mom? It's completely different if she's upset how I handle it because yeah. I know she's a completely different person yeah. and um and just like noticing that kind of thing I I think you're, so you learn really, how to how to address different people based on who they are not right. who you are mm -hmm. a lot of people that's the way they go through the world actually right I've, I've, I mean people that I work with people that I am um, um mm -hmm. I mean these aren't shade anybody that I work with I'm just saying like mm -hmm. you meet people like at work different jobs I've had mm -hmm. um you know out and about in town there are people who, typically speaking, maybe when they're having a really good day, they don't do this, but a lot of times they're basically on autopilot. They just behave how they behave, right. and they say the things that they say. 
they don't necessarily look around them and say what is like what was gonna make these people the most like give them some kind of service or right. be like the most helpful or, or like kind to mm -hmm. the people I'm in the room with. I'm not saying they don't do that ever. I'm just saying that like right. that's not a place that a lot of people live in. It's a place right. some people go in for a little while, for an hour, right? For, right, for a loved one, you go in there for a few times a day for a loved one. Mm -hmm. Being able to like try to live there as yeah. much as possible and really and be I aware of that is it's, huge. It's a very good thing, but it also does have its bad sides <laughs> because I have learned recently about myself that I do tend to do this thing where I'm like, yeah, I was so upset, I was so sad, mm -hmm. uh, and then people so are you like, you don't address your emotions exactly, and I need to work yeah. on that. But yeah. also another thing you were saying is that um, yeah. the whole people doing things their way, yeah. something that was taught by literally almost every adult whenever I was a kid was treat other people how you would like to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a very important lesson because I like had a complete paradigm shift one day with Pishma, our sister, because I don't know, we were getting ready for some show, we were singing, and I think I like was like closing the door and it might have like stubbed her toe or I don't know, it like hurt her in some way and it was like totally by accident. But I was like, oh, you're okay, you're okay, I'm sorry. And that's something I used to do with our cousin where we would like, anytime we were younger and we'd get hurt, we, I'd be like, I'm okay, I'm okay. And they'd be like, you're okay, you're okay. Just to be like, yeah, it'd yeah, be yeah. something like you'd stub your toe and it would just yeah. be like a reminder that like, this is temporary, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was, and I just always do that with myself. I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I'm like, the pain's gone kind of thing. <laughs> but I did it to someone who I'd never done it to before, Pishima, who was like, and she literally just looked at me and was like, don't, she was like, don't treat me like that. Like, that's something that you do. Like, that's fine. But like, that's not for me. Like, that just frustrates me. Yeah. And I was like, mm. oh, wow. Like, no. Like, yes, treat people like with kindness. But don't treat people exactly the way you yeah, want to be treated. Yeah, with her, it means because... be respectful and kind. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. um, I feel like a lot of people yeah. that have come across it do that same kind of thing where they treat you exactly the way they want to be treated, which yeah. is not necessarily. Well, they think because something wouldn't bother them that it it's, makes it okay or right, and mm -hmm. that you should also not that, be bothered yeah. by it because uh, oh, I'm not bothered by it. Why would you be bothered? By exactly. It? Yeah. Um, which some people can take it to the other extreme where people get offended by everything, but I think there is yeah. room for you to be like, oh, this is, you know, somebody's been through something different than me. Yeah. This could be well, actually uh, something that they're not wanting with, to, yeah, with you know, hear or experience with, again. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with, with feeling totally opposite from somebody, but at least being able to recognize that yeah. Yeah. we can agree that we both have our differences and then respect the other yeah. person's, like needs the thing about disagreements is the other guy or a girl or whomever or whatever they identify as um <laughs> they feel just as right as you feel yeah yeah like in 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 the moment it's it's difficult to remember that because you feel like you're right and they're just wrong and they're coming at you and but the reality is they feel exactly the same mm -hmm. so if if uh fact or truth is based on your experience both of you are right and both exactly. of you are also wrong and that's not how it works. What really it is is what's actually happening and what are the intent. But you have to be able to communicate on that level and get around the initial feeling of I'm right, you're wrong because everybody thinks that they're right and the other people are wrong. Mm -hmm. That's your first, for whatever so reason, that's our default. There's what's actually happening and then there's right. the different perspective. Right. Your perspective is not what's actually happening. Yeah. I mean, you can say that it is well, because you are experiencing it. Head, right. It's what you're experiencing. It. Yeah. But it's not, it's the really people confuse that with a fact. Because then they're like, well, it's my experience, so it's true. It's like, no, it's true that it's your experience. Mm -hmm. Your experience could have been something that you thought somebody ignored you. Maybe they didn't even see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You experienced that they ignored the you, and your truth. emotions shouldn't be like, oh, you shouldn't feel like, okay, but, but like, once you realize that they, that they just didn't even realize you were there, um, you know, then it's like time to let go of that annoyance. Not, well, I'm still annoyed because I experienced it as you ignoring me. No, yeah. that's that's a very yeah, easy yeah. example. Like, no, there's a lot of more like, nuanced examples yeah. that like you could get into, but it's just like no. Then now, like yes, it was factual that you felt that way, and now it turns out that it's not exactly what the other person at all was experiencing. That's not what they intended, and now you guys talked about it. Mm -hmm. But now, for instance, if you were too upset, didn't want to talk about it with the other person, 
and now you guys just don't talk and the other person doesn't even know why because you started ignoring them because you thought they ignored you one time yeah. then um you know it just doesn't get resolved because there was no communication and people were just basing it on the just honesty of their experience which yeah. is great you should know what you're experiencing but you can't keep it to yourself yeah. not communicate and judge and or blame other people for it either because yeah. at the yes. end of the day people do things we feel things we're in control of our feelings yeah and no matter I mean, how much you think they're in control yeah. of you, they can push your buttons. You're not even in control of your yeah, feelings. You barely you're, in are, control, let's be real. you're in control of the reaction. To how you react? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna feel things, and then your choice is what you do with those feelings. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, I think that's why they're like I've always had that mentality where I'm like, and obviously I'm not like perfect, and I've yeah. never always um, keep talking. <clears throat> yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's not always something in practice, but it's something that I always try to keep in mind. It's I have no idea what's going on in other people's head. Yeah. I have no idea. And the only way you know is by being curious and trying to find out. Exactly, and they could lie. <laughs> so after that, I have to just respect it and hope that they told me the truth. Yeah. And understand that I will never know. Yeah. And that that's okay. Like, you don't yeah. need to know what's going on. And, um... And also, like, if anybody's sure. ever, like, rude to me on the street kind of thing, I'm yeah. just like, I have no idea what's going on in their life. So I'm nothing just to do gonna... with you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the mentality I always try to keep in mind, even though sometimes I don't practice it. Yeah, I mean, it's easier said than done, but I think it's a good place to be, especially for someone at your age. Um, because the older we get the more stuck in our ways we get mm -hmm. and the more patterned our behavior is and our ways of thinking um and a lot of people like to turn themselves as free thinkers most of us are somewhat patterned even in, in the freeness of our thought mm -hmm. or how much of a rebel we are or whatever the case may be um people that you know maybe don't agree with certain norms or think that certain things are being misconstrued um you without getting into specifics it's very easy then to always think that yeah. And you might be a rebel, but now you're just as trained in your thought as everyone else. Mm -hmm. It's actually very difficult to actually exercise what you're talking about is trying to be aware, learning, and being also, curious, being okay with, the, mm -hmm. like you said, with not knowing some things, right. and still being curious for whatever you can find out. Right. Um, that's and a very difficult like, balance. Like, <clears throat> always, always being open to paradigm shifts. Mm. Yeah, to yeah, being yeah. Like, like, oh wow, that changed that. pretty yeah. much everything. Like, let me just take this. Let me remember this. Mm -hmm. This is okay. Like, yeah. just because I thought everything was supposed to be like this, but now I realize I was wrong. Yeah. Like, it's perfectly okay Being to be okay completely to wrong. And yeah. it's good to shift a lot of the time and yeah. to open yourself to being able to shift. It's very yeah. easy to get stuck in whatever you currently believe. Um, and then you might be presented, to your point, with something that's, like, very, like... Something that could change your life, like mm -hmm. you're saying, a shift. Something that could be like, wow, I didn't ever realize that. But unfortunately, a lot of people, um, all of us at some point in our lives, for sure, I think unless you're really an awesome individual with your mind, uh, most of us have at least at some point or another shut down something because we just weren't open to it at that point. Yeah. At some point, maybe not even in a rude way, like shut someone down, mm -hmm. but you just like didn't accept it. Like, no, yeah. that's not that's not a fact. That guy's an idiot, right? Yeah. Um, but then maybe there was some truth there. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't experience everything. Right. We don't know everything. We literally live in, like, one part of the world. Most of us don't have a ton of money to travel all that much. Mm -hmm. Our mindset is fairly closed off. I mean, like I said, I think we're lucky in that we did experience so many different cultures, even outside of, like, Bhakti. There's just, like, you're hearing things about South Africa or Guyana or Trinidad or, like, you know, you're talking to your friends who, like, I, I knew some people that, like, apparently grew up in, like, a fighting pit where, like, as kids they were forced to fight other kids, <laughs> like, in this other country. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, but like, you know, like people have these different experiences that's like, yeah. that comes with a whole nother viewpoint on life. I mean, that is the whole thing to go through. Yeah. So I think, you know, that does help us in a sense. And then the other thing is like, I think it's important that just because, you know, you have a little bit of an open mind or you're more used to things being different, you can almost get on the opposite side of effective. Like how I said, like, I think we're a little less like standoffish about different things. Mm -hmm. But also, you can easily get less curious about different things, too. Yeah. It's so commonplace now that people are different that you're just like, oh, they're a little different. That's fine. And you just slide right past mm -hmm. it. And you just like, yeah. which is cool because you're not at all dealing with them on the basis right. of whatever you're trying to like some weird judging by the book, book by its cover type deal. But on the opposite side, you're skimming through the pages. You're yeah. not actually reading the book because yeah. 
you've lost the curiosity because you're so accustomed to things being different. And so that's like the uh, double-edged sword thing. Like, right. judging by a cover, not good. Skimming all the pages, not good. Like, mm-hmm. um, unless you're really late on an assignment, that's what you got to do, I, I yeah. guess. But even that's probably not <laughs> yeah. beneficial. Yeah, that's why I... What you do is take a speed reading <laughs> Then you can speed through the book and get all the information. Yeah. Um, I was unfortunately very good at that. So yeah, I, I was unfortunately that. very so good much. at that. Not yeah, so much, not me. Mm, that ain't me. <laughs> I had to read really quickly, um, but of course, the I faster read you read, something. the lesser can retain no, it. Yeah, I, ha- I, I was, I still am that person that reads something, mm. forgets to understand, goes reads again, tries to understand, fail, goes <laughs> reads again, understands a bit of it, but still doesn't get the whole thing, and then reads it the last time. Is like, got it. I retain well, so that. you're actually really smart That's because good. you can acknowledge that it That's takes good. you four times to do it. Yeah. A lot of people would read it once and think, nah, I got this. And they don't got and it. And they don't got I it. I tell you that right well, now. At least you so have many people. The recognition that <laughs> yep. shots the they, yeah. they read really quick or they skim it and they think they got the important information and they missed half of it or they completely misunderstood it and didn't even do what it, like, like for, in a work basis, like I've seen this happen at work here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, myself included on occasion, unfortunately, but I try not to do this, but like sometimes you just like, you read something a little too quick, you see a couple keywords, you think you put it together mm-hmm. and you miss the point. Yeah. Um, and I have kind of trained myself to be very thorough at work nowadays, mm-hmm. but it had happened when I was younger in the first couple times, like, you know, you think you got it and you yeah. don't. Um, but I see all around me, like at different days, uh, people don't, you know, they, they think they got it. They thought they understood it. They missed something that like, to me can even, sometimes it feels like, well, how did you miss that? Yeah. Or how did you not get that? Like, it was right there, you know? It's only, like, a paragraph or two. Mm-hmm. But then, like, the more you think about it, it's like, the, this is, like, they... Like, I grew up, I was lucky to grow up reading. Yeah. And I, so, for me, reading is reading. such... Yeah, I love reading. Um, I grew up reading... I read Lord of the Rings. I'm pretty sure I was at least in the midst of reading it before I was 10. I don't know that I necessarily finished it before I was 10, but I was certainly actively reading it around, like, 8 through, like, 9 and a half or something. I was reading mm-hmm. it. Um... So, like, that's a big book with some, like, and I'm sure there was some words that I was struggling with or whatever, and I had to, like, ask or, or just kind of assume what it meant based on the way it was being used and things. Yeah. But I was reading something like that. Like, whereas, like, a lot of kids I knew were still reading, Bob had a bat, Bob ran fast, you know, Bob hit the ball at literally 11th grade. Yeah. Like, I was stunned. But this is, like, it's easy to think about what we did from a perspective of this is the best way. No, no. And maybe there were some benefits. Like, I, I would strongly say that being a good at reading, loving reading, reading a lot as a kid has certainly helped me in a lot of ways. Because mm-hmm. reading kind of pervades everything we do for a yeah. lot, large part. But, um, you know, it's easy then to come from a place of, like, I read. You guys are boneheads for not reading or something. Yeah. Or like, you go, why can't you read as fast? Um, and that's one of those things that you have to be really careful about not to get into that, like, kind of pitfall of thinking yeah. like that. Because... They have experiences that we haven't done, Mm -hmm. and they could feel the same way. Right. Like, they could feel like, well, I was in a fighting pit from the age of seven, Mm -hmm. so I'll whoop your butt. You know, like, I don't need to read. Or whatever. Like, I I, I live on a farm. Yeah. Right. I'm so good at farming. How do you not know? How do you not need? Or, like, they could be like, how do you not understand how to take care of this animal? Like, it's so easy. Exactly. Like, like it's so easy the things that we do all the time Mm -hmm. to assume that other people are dumb or boneheaded or whatever for not being able to do Mm -hmm. but it's just not a reality yeah and i've always kind of been in a place where i'm like not very good at anything naturally (laughs) so i've had to like really work if i like to like something and um so i i can appreciate whenever somebody's like yeah i'm really good at this thing i'm Mm -hmm. like dancing good for you what about dancing and singing you don't think you're naturally good at that no oh I got good at dancing because my dance teacher moved me down twice. Oh. She moved me down because I wasn't paying attention in class the first oh. time. And she moved me down again because the class got too big and she split it into two classes and I was in the lower class because I wasn't as good yet. Mm. So, and I was uh, two years older than the youngest girl in the class oh. and one year older than everybody else. And then um, I slowly moved up and up and up until I was a 12 year old in a class of seniors um essentially oh. so yeah so you so got good but it took a lot of work yeah you. i had okay. to work for it and and i've seen a really lot of dancers and people that are just not naturally good at things yeah give up mm-hmm. because they're like oh i have to work and then yep. yeah. actually, so whenever somebody's like thing to be naturally some, like oh i'm 
I'm naturally gifted at this, but I kept on working. I'm like, good for you kind of a thing. I'm and like, yes, because it's very easy to burn out um, mm. whenever you... Honestly, the way you're describing is probably one of the best case scenarios, although it may not seem like it on the face of it. Mm. If you have a tenacity that you have to stick through it, yeah. to really just kind of keep trying, even mm. if it takes you a minute. If you want to do something, you're like, no, I want to do this. I'm going to get good at it. I just got to keep working yeah. at it. That is probably, you're better off than someone who is naturally gifted at something, not because naturally gifted can't do the mm -hmm. same thing, but to your point, um, what I've seen a lot of is that when you're really good at something, it's been easy. Yeah. At a certain point, myself very much included, I can be very lazy because of how, you know, quote unquote smart I was as a kid. Mm -hmm. I was very smart. I, you know, passed tests to you also. Like we just, for whatever reason, maybe it was reading young, whatever it was. I mean, we just like, school was never hard. It yeah. was just like, yeah, okay, do this thing. Let me just read this chapter. Okay, no notes. Just take the test. <laughs> like, you know, it's so easy. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, whatever. Um, even to the point of like helping some friends of mine with college courses that I wasn't even in the class and like yeah. I have this paper due I got it 100% like that's just my mind but then yeah. the problem is when there is something that's difficult mm -hmm. when there is something that's like oh that's like that's a challenge for me mm -hmm. I am not accustomed to figuring out how to surmount that challenge as much I have to really try and sometimes it's probably not probably it's definitely led to me maybe just to say I'm just not gonna do that's too difficult and like, then you find a way to justify it. Yeah, you justify totally why. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, it's yeah. like, it's because mm -hmm. I'm not used to the challenge. Yeah. So I think you can, and you absolutely tenacity. can. Tenacity. You, you, that that that's, tenacity that's is actually more important, I think, quality. than any other quality. Provided you, yeah, I mean, if you didn't have tenacity, it could be a problem. Yeah. Obviously, like if you're just like, ah, I'm just not going to try anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's really cool that you, that you did. Do you, what do you think, what do you attribute that to? Is it just supernatural for you? Is that like a moment for you where you realize that you were just going to have to put in the work if you wanted things? Or? I feel like there was a few moments where um, I guess I was like told I don't know there, I, I feel like for dance especially there was a few moments where I was like told specifically by the teacher you're doing that wrong mm. and I'm just like I'm gonna do it till I do it right like no matter mm. what it was because I just liked it so much mm -hmm. um, So you enjoyed the dancing for instance yeah. even though you made, at one point you weren't that good at it yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. And I've always really mm. enjoyed, I guess, watching specific things like Redunga and stuff like that. So, like, I'll work on things that I really like mm. watching a lot. Mm. Okay. Um, and they bring you some joy. What is it you like about them before you're good at it? <clears throat> before, well, I like the beauty okay. of it. Like, I like just, like like sitting in kirtan i used to like just stare at the mordunga player's hands mm. and just like stare it down and be like mm, that was my do? first <laughs> that's my first christian conscious memory growing up because mm. my mom and dad mm. be, like got books and started becoming de devotees before you know my mom especially before i was right before i was born and we went to chicago temple and that was my first memory was coming into the kirtan really huge temple room it was very mm -hmm. loud and echoey i see the deities and i was like three probably three at the time that i remember this it was before Druba was born and that was it the Murdunga mm -hmm. for me seeing the yeah. dude up there playing Murdunga, and i was like wow <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. sick and you know what right then and there i remember like feeling because i really couldn't speak but i had the feelings of like I want to learn how to play that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then many years later, I go to group, I start taking Murdunga classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I had like one of the best Murdunga teachers in the world. Yeah. And it's just interesting how that yeah. uh, Krishna arranged for that desire yeah. to at some point become fulfilled. So, yeah. yeah. And, and just things like, I remember being like, I don't know, five, six, it was one of my first years of dance and we were dancing to something Oh, what was it? Oh, Sunday Clothes. I think that's the name of the song. From Hello, Dolly. Mm -hmm. And the, and my teacher was like, uh, go home and ask your parents to watch the movie. Like, she would do that a lot, especially if you're, like, younger dancer, haven't really been mm -hmm. exposed to that much yet in the world of, like, the world of dance, you know? And so I, I like, watched the movie, and I remember... To this day, a lot of kids my age would be like, remember watching Mary Poppins? And I'm like... And I'm like, but did you watch Hello, Dolly? <laughs> like, I love, there's, like, all these, like, extravagant dance scenes. And then I was like, like, whoa. <laughs> like, just 
being amazed by that movie. And so just stuff like that, like just watching people and like watching Bernatium and like mm -hmm. just being like, wow, like that's yeah. cool, you know. But um, yeah, so I guess it was really just my fascination for it. So the, I think the fascination for seeing these people doing the dance deep down, you must have realized somewhere that only perseverance and dedication can get me to that if you want point. to get there i gotta and keep so that, yeah. subconsciously you must have it must have clicked and you just knew that i may not be that good but i want that yeah and therefore krishna gave you the tenacity to yeah. achieve yeah. what you wanted yeah because like being in dance class like like i'd obviously look in the mirror and see like i'm not good they're so good. yeah <laughs> they're know? good and then but you can yeah. get there and i and i'm still <laughs> not amazing yeah. i'm not that great you know like i grew up in a small town it's not like a professional studio at all so like yeah. i know where like i the things now i've come down to like okay this is the specific type of dance that i really like mm -hmm. and i will try to keep working on it even after i like leave yeah. and graduate mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah and i know that have like you checked out some of the dance studios down here or no I'm not coming down here. What do you think? What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> no, that's not my plan. I think okay. I'm gonna go to New York, but okay. yeah. Um, There's a lot of dance studios in New York, so yeah. yeah. But I know that specifically. I, I like tap. I'm mm -hmm. good at tap. I can keep getting a lot better at tap versus something like ballet. Mm -hmm. really, like I think for me, <laughs> that's not. And I and I can work really hard on it, but. I don't, you don't really you don't want find it. the joy in it. As yeah, well. I don't find the joy in it. What? I mean, I might want to later on, but not right now. That's not where I'm at. I think it's interesting too because another thing that could be a side effect of this, from my perspective, um, when you're naturally good at a lot of things, or just like, like I've always said, like from using myself as an example, I feel like I can very quickly get the basics of things. Like I can really quickly get like enough of a handle on it to sort of do something, but not. I, it's difficult for me to then take it to like where I'm really actually super good. It's just mm -hmm. like I can sort of muddle my way through a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, and so while that's a useful talent to some extent, it's also like, like I said, then it can be challenging to never want to take anything and like full. And I think when things you're, you're naturally good at things, you can feel like a lot of things are fun. It's easy to confuse being good at something for enjoying it. And I think when you have to really work at it, it probably really helps you know do I what like you really or... like because if you suck at it but you still enjoy it and keep doing it every day you clearly like that thing mm -hmm. if you're naturally kind of good at it anyway and you get to that point then it's like okay well is it worth pushing all the way through before do i actually like this maybe i, don't I know. only liked it because maybe i only liked it because it. it was like fun and easy like do i actually like the thing itself even when it's hard even when mm -hmm. it's not like you know quote unquote like super easy and just like oh so nice like when it's really the hard work do i enjoy that mm -hmm. and it's really important i think in life to look for things that you enjoy, whether it be a day job or whatever else you're doing, because the goal is never enjoyment. You're never going to get to this fantastical place of enjoyment. We talked well, about this it before. It is if you're you caught up in the material. Well, but what I mean is you're never going to get there. Sorry, yeah. I misspoke. The goal is not enjoyment in the sense of like your goal of enjoyment is never going to come. Mm -hmm. Like the idea that like when you get that big mansion, you're going to be happy. It's like when you get the big mansion. You're going to be happy for a little while until that becomes normal. But now and then what next? Or you get a certain number of money. It. It's like, okay, what comes? Or you have more problems. Or in order to get that mansion, you alienated a bunch of friends or whatever. There's all kinds of circumstances. But, like, you will have fun for a period of time. But at some point, you'll need something else now to satisfy it. Mm -hmm. You need a new, new thing. You need a new car. Now you need another new car a couple years later. Whatever. Like, very quickly, things become normal to us. And so I think the, you have to learn to love the journey. And you've yeah. already clearly gotten good at figuring out what journeys you love and what journeys you don't love. Yeah. And you're doing mm -hmm. that. And that's going to help you, I think, have a much happier life than some of us have had. Because it's mm -hmm. sometimes difficult to find things that we really, truly enjoy the journey. Yeah. That journey yeah. of failing sometimes, getting back up, trying again. Mm -hmm. um, like, if you can enjoy all of that, then mm -hmm. you've already won at life. I mean, that's like success yeah. in my book. I mean... People can be successful, have tons of money, and be miserable, be depressed. People, unfortunately, you know, people that are super successful, tons of money, you know, attractive, significant others, whatever else, it will still sometimes end up in mental hospitals or even, you know, unfortunately committing things like suicide. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like, if that was really what happiness is, why would that happen? You know, it's like, if we have so much in front of us that shows us that's actually not mm -hmm. happiness, 
but a lot of us still somewhere in our mind think, yeah, but if I had that, I wouldn't. We think we're like, different. Yeah, we're going to be we different somehow. It's like you see somehow. all these people mm-hmm. that had it. And yeah, some of them are, you know, I'm not saying all of them do that, but like, but the even ones a lot of them still have happy, issues. Well, they're doing things they're, to serve other exactly. people. Exactly. And, and they're people who are having fun being themselves, clearly enjoy it. Yeah. There's a few people like that. You say, oh, cool. They really made yeah. it and they clearly enjoy it. Yeah. But that's the difference is yeah. they enjoy the process. Yeah. yeah. Um, during quarantine, I really learned like, uh, well, I, I guess I kind of already knew this, but I really started trying to appreciate as much as possible the... Mm. The very little things like just mm. going I would like go out every single day and just listen to music and watch the sunset mm. because I was like obviously I had nothing else to do yeah but um this was something that was like right mm. there and I can do and I had a really nice view if I just go walk up to the neighbors and yeah. like sit on the porch and just be like yeah. I missed <laughs> it's easy to not slow down and like watch on watch like nature just like take in what's going on around you the yeah curiosity just go on a walk every leave. day yeah, yeah I would go on a walk and then watch the sunset every single day because it was like I had nothing else to do, and this was, like, right there in front of me. Why not, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so that was really nice, like, learning how to just, like, that very simple thing. I was like, I gotta watch the sunset today. (laughs) Like, gotta go do it. Like, it's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It is. We went to the Springs the other day, and I brought Shanka with us. And we got there, and right before we got in the water, he stood up, and he's there doing his... He's like... (sighs) (laughs) And he looks around and he's like, there's so many beautiful living entities all around us. Mm-hmm. And you can, and then I'm like yeah. stopped and he's like, just close your eyes. <laughs> I'm like, close my eyes and you can hear all the kids splashing around and then you can hear the birds. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and I realized like, yeah. How much of that here did they not ever is, see? Where can tell here he, yeah, he's here Take about to leave his body and every day he comes to the springs and that's his mood is I'm absorbing everything around me right now at yeah. least that's you know that's what it was right there in that moment it was yeah. very beautiful and i was like mm-hmm. wow um yeah but yeah to appreciate those things is um and it's actually one of the ways that naturally we give you yeah. know you're really when you're appreciating the beauty of nature around you in that awe filled way you're really actually worshiping yeah. krishna yeah you're worshiping the 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 Virat Rupa, or the universal form of Krishna, yeah. you're experiencing and reciprocating, you know, and that's where the beauty comes from. Yeah, that's yeah. why I love taking pictures in Kirtan mm. and like Rathi Atra. I love doing that. Catching gotten, the happy look on the yeah, people's faces. Yeah, I've gotten so many like crazy pictures where I'm like, I don't know how I got this. Like one time this girl was like jumping like really crazy and I just like snapped like a few shots oh, and I wow. got this perfect, like she's smiling and she's perfectly clear. I'm like, I don't know how this is that's possible, awesome. how I got this yeah, clear picture. Awesome. And that I got this really one cool. where this guy was like, like there was tons of people coming in between. And I was like, just trying to get this nice shot of this guy playing Redunga. And then I just got this perfect, nice shot of him just like, and I was like, yeah, yes, like this so is cool. perfect. Where it's like, they're like, like going so fast. I have no idea how I got like the perfect hand, like where yeah. you didn't see it. Like, I'm like, whoa, wow. I don't know how like I did magic. it. Pictures like, of yeah. devotees in Kirtan or, or, I mean, just people in church singing hymns or whatever. Oh, yeah. You can tell when, when people get together Are really happy. and sing when and use their bliss. voice. Cause, uh, Ayindra Prabhu talks about this, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the Sanskrit word for it, but when you're singing with pure devotion, to God from the heart, yeah, you know, kirtan in a Baptist church, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you, you know, down here they call it, you know, what? Oh, that has soul in it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that <coughs> the love, the soul. Where yeah. when the love actually comes through, and you can tell when <clears throat> someone's singing, professional singers or whatever, you can tell the artists that really love it, and the ones that are just uh, yeah. just doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. The ones that it love it, their music is next level. Yeah, like yeah. there's something to it, it that. And the same thing with cooking. Yeah. That chef that cooking puts that love, extra yeah. love in it. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, that's that devotional, like, yeah. Yeah. something to it. Yeah, and I, I like performing because you can share that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's one thing, like, just, like, doing a video or whatever on, online, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, being able to perform in front of a live crowd mm-hmm. and, like, yeah. share that you moment. The, you also like, get the energy. Yeah. It's like, like it's, like, energies. right there. Yeah. Um, and also be kind of vulnerable, vulnerable without, um, without actually like saying anything. Yeah. Like you can do a dance and people are like, mm. and yeah. then 
but you didn't have to like share any personal thoughts or whatever, but yeah. it was like a shared You're sharing like, in a different way. Moment, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a non verbal expression. Even if it, it is carries, singing, yeah. Uh, picture is worth a thousand words and with mm -hmm. dance you can create your yeah. moving pictures. It's right, great. Yeah. Bharat Natyam really feels like that to me when I watch mm -hmm. when you when they're the really good dancers mm -hmm. come up there and you're like, wow. It's like they're offering RT almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really powerful. Yeah, I definitely love like watching live performances yeah. and stuff. And doing live performances. Yeah. Fun, yeah. But, yeah. Um so mm -hmm. Of uh, a couple of wrap up questions. One thing is, what is it? Is there anything that you were thinking, or maybe while the conversation was going on, it came up for you, or before uh, leading up to this, that you were hoping we'd ask, or were thinking we might ask that we didn't ask, and that you'd like no. to the answer? Okay. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> okay. Um, and so then another question would be um, with the. I guess if you had to leave some wisdom for um, yourself in the future and also like anybody in the world, if you could, if you could get a message out where like if, if like everybody could see that, what would you say to like, you know, the world at large, to share with the world? If, if there was one thing that you could actually get across to everybody, something, you know, fairly simple, but, but meaningful for you. Um, wow. That's really funny. I don't know why, but I guess like, that question, I feel like I've been asked that before and I had no idea. Or maybe it was like something online where I just saw like, what would you say to the world if you could tell everybody one thing right well, now? Well, we ask like, everybody that at the end of our I know. Like, what, our I guess question. it was that. Like, I don't know. I've seen that I'm like sure a few times and every that. single time I'm like, we I have no idea. But ask. it just came to me. I just realized what it is. Oh, it's what, um, it's what I literally... It's my symbol. It's what I came up with in literally sixth grade. Sweet. Was um, love life. Just love appreciate life, life mm -hmm. while you're here, while you're in the moment. Like, appreciate the moment kind of thing. Because um, while I was kind of starting off puberty, adolescence kind of thing, yeah. I was really starting to be really negative. Yeah. And I was like, I got to remember this for myself. And so I, like, made up a little thing in mm -hmm. a class one day and, like, Ever since then, I'm like writing it down everywhere yeah. to just love. simply love life. Love life. To me, that also means love li everything that has life. Love yeah. all living things. Love yeah. life. Love living it. Love the things that are living it. Mm -hmm. Love the people. Love the animals. Love nature. Yeah. yeah, it's really, that's very simple, but very deep. Yeah. Yeah. Fit the criteria quite nicely. Do you have any wrap up question or do you think we're. No, I. I think we had got to we had to do some cool stuff. I think the tenacity yeah. thing is really powerful for people to hear, yeah. especially coming from someone who's who's doing it at a young age and is learning that yeah. about herself and like trying. I think it's really powerful for, for sure. other young people to hear and and for all of us to remember, no matter what age we are, because we can always start. Oh, I guess. <clears throat> I mean, it's I guess a little bit more similar, but if mm -hmm. you could say something to other young ladies out there, like my daughter. Mm. Um, as far as something that, like, what advice would you give them to help them get through the kind of hard, you know, teen years? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think specifically for women or anybody of minority, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, be, be assertive, okay. be confident. Mm. You can be wrong and realize that you're wrong later. Go mm -hmm. apologize. That's fine. Be mm -hmm. assertive when you're apologizing. But if somebody, for example, just small practices, like I remember at, at lunch in sixth or seventh grade, I uh, they had a science detail lunch, with, which is a whole conversation, but <laughs> it was very not great uh, yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I was around a lot of kids that were always trying to tease me mm -hmm. and with my food, and I stopped eating. Mm -hmm. And um, and that wasn't good, and I shouldn't have mm -hmm. done that. Yeah. Uh, but a thing that I did do that was good is that I would go and talk to my friends at another part whenever we could go walk around. And when I came back, there would always be someone sitting in my seat. And I'd be like, <clears throat> please get out of my seat. Yeah. And they would look at me. And because they're not used to, I guess, um, because it is very common for 
people of minority women to just sit there quietly be like, um, excuse me, mm-hmm. excuse me, can you yeah. leave? Mm. Um, and then be like, no. And I was like, just get out of my seat, please. Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, okay. And they'd get out and I'd just be like, and I'd just sit there yeah. and I wouldn't really talk to anybody either. around me because like they weren't really going to give me anything back that yeah. I needed. And I'd just be assertive and be like, this is what I need right now. I'm going to get Good in trouble if I'm not in my seat by this time. Get yeah. out of my seat. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. a very simple thing. Not being rude, just being like, this is the situation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Just... Be assertive and, and own, own your truth, own yourself. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. and like you said, oh no, when you're wrong, you can come back and say, I was wrong for that. Yeah. I apologize. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. my bad. But mm-hmm. yeah, you need to be And assertive. be assertive as to what you're apologizing for. Is yeah, yeah, apologizing yeah, yeah. for too much. That you, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, good. Yeah. yeah, I could have said it nicer, yeah. but I still stand by what I said. That kind of, yeah. you know, like, wait, <laughs> yeah. to the point. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, David Huti. Thank you for your time. Um, thank you, Hamsa. Great episode. Thank you, Nathai. Don't forget to <laughs> like, subscribe, share, do all the things. Um, And we'll see you next week. All right.